Hello everybody, welcome to Brainy Dental. In our series of Tooth Wear Part 2, we'll be discussing non-carrier cervical lesions. And under that, the first lesion we'll talk about is abrasion. So let's go ahead and watch. Now, what are these non-carrier cervical lesions? They are those which are present at the cemento enamel junction level and are not related to dental caries. Now, if you look at the photograph, you will observe that there are lesions present at the cemento enamel junction level. Now, this is an area of structural weakness where the thickness of enamel is very less. Therefore, this area is very prone to breakdown. And what causes the breakdown? Well, they have multifactorial etiology where you cannot point out that a single factor is responsible for the lesion initiation and progression. However, some of the factors are occlusion, saliva, age, sex, diet, stress fracture, trauma, parafunctional habits, and so on. Non-carrier cervical lesions include abrasion, erosion, and abfraction. We'll be doing each one in detail. Abrasion is defined as a pathological loss of tooth structure due to frictional forces existing either between the tooth and the foreign substance or between the contacting teeth in the presence of an abrasive medium. Why is abrasion a pathologic process? For the simple reason it is happening due to some external influence. You see constant frictional forces by foreign bodies, they cause abrasion on the tooth surface. We have seen that. This leads to loss of enamel and that causes exposure to dentine, which results in irritation of the odontoplasts and it stimulates secondary dentine formation as a defensive mechanism. Now, usually this is sufficient to protect the pulp unless the wearing away of the tooth surface is very rapid and then it results in abrasion facets. Coming to the etiology, the most common cause resulting in abrasion is tooth brushing. Now, there are different factors under it. The first one and the most common one is faulty tooth brushing. If you look at the video, you will see this is a horizontal tooth brushing technique and this is not correct. It results in abrasion facets in the cervical region of the tooth or the neck of the tooth. And another factor is the stiffness of the toothbrush bristles. Stiffer the bristles, more is the abrasion. Then the use of abrasive dentifices, that also results in that. And influence of acids. Now, if you take colas and cokes, they are acidic beverages. It results in weakening of the outer tooth surface and it increases the chance of abrasion from tooth brushing with or without toothpaste. Now the abrasion facets resulting from tooth brushing, they have specific features. Firstly, they occur in the cervical one third of the tooth. Secondly, the lesion is smooth, V-shaped with the walls meeting at an acute angle. Now if you look at the photograph, you will observe that the walls, they are smooth like this and they're meeting at an acute angle. And the exposed dentine, it appears to be highly polished. It shows sensitivity to hot, cold, sweet sensation and it may elicit pain on probing. The next cause for abrasion are different type of oral habits. The first one being nail biting or pipe smoking. Now this manifests as localized incisor edge abrasion in the form of a notch. If you look at the photograph, you will observe a notch shaped abrasion facet present here. This is a typical nail biting or pipe smoking abrasion facet. Then the regular use of toothpicks or interdental stimulators. Now look at the photograph. You will observe if such an abrasion is there, it will be present somewhere here. Abrasion facets will be present here or here. Then tobacco chewing, it results in generalized occlusal surface abrasions. The third cause is occupational abrasions. Now there are certain occupations which can have side effects of abrasion lesions like glass blowers who use blow pipes. You can see in the photograph, this leads to half moon shaped abrasions developed on the upper and the lower teeth. Now similar abrasions can also be seen in tailors and in shoemakers. Then abrasions can result due to clasps of partial denture as seen in the picture. This is the clasp and its constant presence here can lead to abrasion in this area. Then masticatory abrasion. Now if the teeth are worn on incisor or occlusal surfaces of both 
or both by the friction of food bolus it is termed as masticatory abrasion coming to the management now the most important aspect in the management of abrasive lesion is to diagnose the cause and to eliminate them why is this important because any restorative treatment will fail if the etiology persists and the main objective of restoration is to prevent any further destruction of the tooth so you have to keep these three points in mind when you start with the management of such a case following sequence should be followed under management now the first step is to deal with an emergency that means a patient comes to you with a lesion that is deep painful and has pulp exposure so in this case you should go in for endodontic therapy to relieve the patient symptoms now in case the patient comes to you and under routine examination then you have to follow the following steps your first idea should be to identify the cause and eliminate it now you see is it because of a habit if it is so then the habit has to be modified like nail biting or pipe smoking or is it because of improper technique then you have to correct it for example faulty tooth brushing technique in such situations proper patient education has to be given check for any hypersensitivity hypersensitive teeth need to be desensitized now in this point you must understand that hypersensitivity if not adequately managed before restoration the teeth will remain sensitive to thermal changes forever therefore desensitization is very important it should be achieved by using fluoride solutions like stannous fluoride or iron phosphorus and once we've managed that we check the lesions now supposing the shallow there are shallow white lesions which are restricted only to enamel or cementum then the surfaces do not require any restoration restoration is needed basically for wedge shaped lesions exceeding 0.5 mm in dentine if you look at the photograph these are such lesions which can be restored and to restore them we used tooth colored restorative materials like glass enamel or composites i hope you enjoyed this video do like it share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel also check out the videos on management of deep caries lesions and principles of inlay cavity preparation now all the data in this presentation has been taken from textbook of operative dentistry written by me the link of it has been given in the description box below thank you